Welcome to 2022. Today we're going to talk about some of the things we learned in 2020, took over into 2021, hope to expand upon for 2022, and some of the new workflows, technologies we bought into, some of the uh, experiences we had, and how we hope to be better for the coming year. So in 2020, we came into vMix. We learned about it through word of mouth. They have a wonderful trial period of 60 days. You can use it and see if it really works for you. And then you purchase it. No, it's full blown product too. So no uh, shareware limited version. And we took hold into it. We learned from their great tutorials online and we really put it into use in our workflow. We use it for many different productions, had a great time with it. We thought maybe once 2021 came around and everyone started to get back in house, some of our more remote work would have tailed off or some of our um, multicam situations, maybe we would have gotten bigger and gone back to hardware solutions. But it turned out 2021 was a bit more of the same. Even though towards the end of the year, we went back in house for production, we still found that we used vMix for most of it. Now, when it came to learning from that, how do we intend to use that in 2022? We really don't know yet because as powerful as it is, especially for our church setting, we're looking to expand to do even more cameras and um, build up a bigger infrastructure, which means we may be moving to the Blackmagic Design Constellation system. Now we'll still use vMix, to do our ultimate streaming off of. But in the interim, because of the number of inputs that we're going to be adding, and it might be much easier to do it hardware wise instead of buying additional inputs for our computer, we'll probably end up going to the Constellation. I mean, 40 inputs, how could you get over that? And you can use it as a matrix switcher as well. There's no beating that. Now, as you see here, we are using money cameras in the studio today. So we have our Blackmagic Design Pocket 6K. We have the uh, Studio 4K Pro. And we have the Panasonic EVA1. We also have an overhead camera, but we're, we're, not, we're not worried about that one too much. So the reason why we're doing this is just for fun. It's not a comparison. We're not doing camera tests. In fact, if you really check, the white balance is a bit different between the Studio 4K and the Pocket um, 6K and the EVA1. Um, and this is at a completely different angle too. In fact, I still need to bring down the ISO a bit. No, maybe I'll bring down the F-stop. That'll be better because it's really glaring in the background. So this isn't a camera comparison. We're just thinking about some of the camera technology that we bought into. Um, I, I believe I got this, the Pocket 6K, early 2021. Um, and I've loved it. It's been really good. I've been using it basically as a studio camera because I there was no field to go out into to, to record. Um, the parks were empty. Uh, everyone was in lockdown and then even when we were starting to open up it was just easier to use some of my other cameras I don't know if you remember my JVC GY LS 300 loved that camera um, and then I had an event where I was using it with the GH5 and the difference between the 8-bit and the 10-bit uh, it settled it for me so I ended up buying the EVA1, which I really love. You just used it on an event. Um, and it's so compact, it's so sleek. I'm just in the process of building it out. And then of course, the Studio 4K, these we got for our church. I did a video on them recently and how they're gonna work in the church. These things are gorgeous in the right lighting. So now the work is gonna be to make sure we get the right of the work is going to be to make sure we get the right lighting for the church. And this tally light is amazing. So there's a huge benefit with using the Pocket 6K and the Studio 4K when you own 
an ATEM Mini. Now, I believe ATEM Mini came out in 2019 before the world went crazy. Uh, and even then, they were hard to get. And I didn't end up getting the ATEM Mini. I got the Mini Pro. And then once the Pro ISO came out, I had to have that one because the ISO record features were just amazing. And then, of course, they released the ATEM Mini Extreme. And the Extreme ISO, I didn't buy the Extreme because I was waiting. I think they released the Extreme and the Extreme ISO at the same time. And once again, the Extreme ISO, I had to have it. So I sold off the other two that I had at the time and got the Extreme ISO. Now, I can get a top-down shot in it, but I'm going to end up breaking <laughs> my setup here. Um, every All the cabling is tight. But these are, they're so great because the tally light, I love being able to tell which camera's on. It's going to be um, wonderful when I integrate it with the Constellation at the church so that the speaker will know which camera's on. It'll be, it, it'll just be, it'll improve our production level. Now I mentioned before lighting, um, I don't know how to uh, properly light this room to, to handle three cameras to make sure we get the same ISO levels. I'm using my big soft box here. But one of the things I really wanted to do for next year is learn lighting more. In fact, let me go over a chart of things I need to learn for 2022 because they're going to be very important moving forward. Number one, learn your equipment. I have had the ISO Extreme for a while, and I know there are tons of tutorials out there, but I still haven't learned all the features. Let's see, like setting up a picture in picture. That's fairly simple. But a lot of this has to be done ahead of time, or you incorporate it with the computer. Um, being able to do this on the fly is crucial. Being able to set up your different images, your pictures, and then how you bring it over, how your layout's going to be for your super source, and what you put in the super source. But it's things like that, being able to learn what your equipment does. So number one for me to learn is my uh, ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. Number two is time code. I bought, where is it? Hang on one second. You know, they tell you never to have a rolling chair when you do these things. For one, you can take yourself out of focus real easy. And for two, the noise it makes is terrible. Anyway, so... After an event we did in 2022, no, 2021, yes, after an event we did in 2021, I realized I needed to have time code sync on my cameras. We did a multi-camera shoot with external audio, and it was horrifying to put everything together. So we went ahead and got the tentacle sync, got our sync cable to go into the pocket 6K, the EVA, oh, the EVA one can do time code. Then I also got a Zoom F, oh, wrong camera, a Zoom F6, so that we can do time code. Got the module for it. Now I've got to put it together and use it. That's one of the reasons why these cameras are up, so I can set up um, time code. And I know the Extreme ISO makes it so you don't really need time code, especially since I do use DaVinci Resolve. I'm recording an ISO file right now of all the cameras. But learning how to do this in the field, if I don't have my Extreme ISO, if I'm using a different product, being able to go out into the field and do it is going to be important. Eventually, we'll be able to get out into the field properly. So, number two is time code using the tentacle sync using it with all these cameras and using it with the zoom f6 um, lastly on the list is learning 
Oh, you don't even see this. This is the Behringer X32. Well, I'll look this way. This is the Behringer X32 uh, console. We were able to come up with a project where we're working with this on a regular basis. And I wish I can get that into overhead shot, but forget that. One of the things that um, the Behringer X32 has been out for many years. And one of the things that was crucial is if I'm going to work on a project, I need to know the equipment. They have multiple copies of it. Um, they have the X32, um, the full-size one, as well as the producer. This one is the compact, so it doesn't have the um, scribble strip. <laughs> it doesn't have the light bar with, where it has the names, but otherwise and that is fully functional. Great, got it on a great deal from Sweetwater. Can't, can't thank them enough. And... It's a great mixer. I didn't realize how good it is. One of the problems with working with a particular church for a number of years is you get locked into the technology they have, and sometimes you don't get to experience other mixers. I'm fortunate in that our work takes us to other places. We work with Yamaha boards, um, Roland boards, um, but pri primarily we've been working with Allen & Heath, a lot of Allen & Heath, from the SU to the iLive to the iLive to the iLive so and the iLive is a deprecated system now it's it's not even supported it's been replaced by the DLive but because it's what we've had and as a church we don't invest hundreds of thousands of dollars each year just to upgrade something that's working um, it's good to be able to venture out and work with other products now one of the things we realize is with the iLive uh, being out of support, it's basically a dead-end system at this point that we will have to upgrade within the next year. Um, and we have to experience which would be a nice uh, console. An audio engineer I know keeps trying to push me to the Behringer wing. We'll talk about it. But that's something else we would like to experience. What we would like to have a chance to work on some different audio consoles so that we're familiar with them. And in case we're put in a situation where we have to work on it, we know how to use it. So that's something else we want to learn in uh, 2022. The X32 is very simple. The routing is, of, is different. Um, in fact, the latest firmware uh, really improved the routing. So now you don't have to route in blocks. You could actually route individual channels. It's a very simple board to learn. It really is. And once you get the hand, handle of it, um, it's, it's very easy to set up. I've been working with a lot of different configurations here and um, been having a good time with it, uh, learning it. And it's, it's a powerful mixer. Did I say lastly? I said lastly the thing we want to learn is the X32. Um, one of the things I want to concentrate on in 2022 is not chasing after the latest technology. Do you know how many camera models came out last year? Do you know how many camera systems came out last year? I don't. There were just so many. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go look it up and it'll flash on the bottom of the screen. But there were so many different camera models that if you chased after them, um, for one, I don't know how you could afford it. And for two, would you really have time to learn it and hone your craft on it? I mean, that DJI 4D camera is really impressive. Yeah, there's some drawbacks, but it's really impressive for a particular kind of work. We're still searching for that holy grail of the best camera, the perfect camera. And there really is no perfect camera. Um, there's you can sell people on all different systems which one has the best image which one is the easiest to use which one is the most affordable which one can you get the most out of with the least amount of work which one has the best post-processing system which one um, handles the easiest if you have limitations with handling which one can fit in a gimbal versus which one you can rig up to um, to work in any environment. 
Do you see what they're doing in the NFL now with the side cameras, the, the end zone cameras, and the emotion cameras? They have, I looked it up, the first one I heard was an A7S3 that they were using for the sideline cameras, but I'm not so sure that's what they're using for all the shots, and I still have to find out. But there was a time when that would never be used in a professional broadcast situation. The perfect camera is the one you have. And the one you know how to use. I honestly miss, I sold my JVC LS300. I had it for many years. It was immensely dependable. You can use it with, um, with easy SD cards, easy to use SD cards. Um, very easy to set up. I used it with a um, speed booster to go from Micro Four Thirds mount to EF. And it was so dependable. And yet that 8-bit hurt me a couple of times. If they had released a newer version, same format, better codec, um, they could have even kept the Micro Four Thirds mount. I, I'm not that worried about it. But it needed to go up to 10-bit. It just did. And they never released it. I thought, to me, that was close to the perfect camera for what I do. Easy to take out the box, easy to set up, easy to get everything you need out of it. And yet there were quite a number of drawbacks. The monitor was terrible. The menu system was poor. Um, the the 8-bit, we talked about that. But the fact that it was uh, interchangeable mount, um, had XLR inputs, full-size XLR inputs, and used easily available SD cards, it was great. And that's what I'm hoping the EVA-1 will do. I've already started to rig it out. Wow, that's way too bright. But um, that's taking the place, and it has an EF mount. Can't go bad with an EF mount, especially not when you're surrounded by EF lenses. Boy, that's a bit of a ramble. I'm, I'm just... I wanted to start out strong rambling in the in 2022 to really set myself up for what I intend to do throughout this year and things change plans happen um, I may get a job move going to Fiji and and none of this equipment can go with me I'll have to use something else I may never get a chance to use a Behringer again the idea is to really make yourself flexible I like the, the line about what Bruce Lee said, be like water. Make yourself be able to maneuver around obstacles, but then strong enough to, um, to move big objects in your way, powerful enough to batter down walls, and yet um, mobile enough to move from one place to the other, uh, cleansing out the areas. Ooh, I'm getting all philosophical. So for 2022, these are just some of the things on our mind. Some of the things we'd love to accomplish for this year. And um, we hope you'll go on this journey with us. We still have a lot more uh, Church AV Pro talk to do to deal with. Um, we have, I still need to connect with some of my friends and see what projects we can do throughout 2022. So come on this journey with us. And here's hoping you see me soon.